maybe we'll get started. Uh, people are probably going to drop in. If, uh, feel free to turn on your cameras if you want or leave them off if you want, whatever is best for you. Um, I'm Mark Wasuda, and I'm here with Felicity Scott, who on my screen is right yeah, beside me. Welcome. Yeah, uh, I am right beside you on my Zoom too. Funny. <laughs> Um, so I, we're probably we're we're just going to say a few things about the program, and um, give a general introduction, and and then hopefully hopefully just open it up to questions because I presume that's why you're here is because you have questions and possibly some curiosity about the program, and presumably you know something about the program already. I know some of you know about the program already because I've seen you before. Um, so, so you might have questions about the program, you might have questions about GSAP, you might have questions about the application process, whatever aspect uh, you want to address, this is a good time to do it. And these are all good motivations for being here. Um, probably you know that this is a two year graduate degree and it um, is a relatively small program. We aim to have 10 to 12 students per year. And it has a fairly open structure. And, and I think it's important to start there to think a little bit about what the structure of the program is and why. The requirements for the program in the first year are the two colloquia, uh, one that I teach and one that Felicity teaches. And then you have three other courses that you're required to take each semester. In the second year, you have a year long thesis and your requirement there is that you enroll in your thesis and you do your thesis <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll come back to the thesis <laughs> we'll in a minute that. Um, <laughs> and that you enroll in the thesis workshop um, you're also required to take it uh, one other course per semester in the second year so you'll see that it's not a lot of courses that are specific to cccp because that the cons conception of the program and uh, and its structure is to allow people to come into the program to develop their own individual mode of research and the and to take courses that help them define and refine the type of work that they want to be doing within the program and when they leave the you probably know that the program is oriented toward types of practice that are distinct from how we generally identify architectural professional design practice it's not a design program, it's a research-based program, prim primarily writing, but we also are very interested in exploring different genres of work um, uh, that are sister to writing. Uh, people have worked in video, people have worked in critical cartography, people have worked in um, different forms of visualization, which all work hand in hand with their research and their writing. The, but beyond that, the types of work that students generally orient toward within the program and after our historical theoretical research. Um, some of our students go on to PhD programs. Many of our students are interested in exhibition work and museum work and curatorial work. And so we think about exhibitions and curation historically and critically within the program. And some of our students go on to work in museums, <laughs> museums and galleries. Uh, we're interested in publications, meaning how one makes publications, but also how one edits and how one contributes and how one writes for publications. And we've got lots of students who have worked in that uh, uh, mode after graduation. And we also have students who return to practice, uh, albeit in a different mode than the one that they might have been doing before they came in. Um, and, and just to come back to the museum uh, gallery curation uh, aspect, we also have students who have started their own galleries or their research institutes. And that's an incredibly interesting aspect of the program as well. So knowing that people come into the program to rethink and reorient their own relationship to architecture and to their own work, the program necessarily is loosely structured so that students are able to take courses that help them refine and define their own research interests. That's not to say you're going to be left on your own. It's a 
because it's a small program, it's an intimate program. We work with you closely. Uh, you get to know each other incredibly well within the colloquia. You work with each other. You will get to know the second year students while you're in first year. Um, and you will, there will also be opportunities that we structure within the program for you to meet people who have graduated and who are in New York or who or have left New York and we invite back for events within the school. Um, just to say a little bit more about thesis, um, the way it's structured is you will find an advisor fairly early in the fall semester of your second year, and you will meet that advisor and you will work with that person throughout the year. Um, but primarily it's individually driven research and, and you will um, uh, develop the project yourself in consultation with your advisor. Um, and you will also have, it's not entirely um, lonely work. You have the thesis workshop. So you speak to each other in the thesis workshop and you develop a conversation with your peers about your uh, how your thesis work is going and and um, um, and how to continue to, 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 to refine the work. And that idea of the thesis as an ongoing iterative project is also reflected in how we structure the thesis reviews. There are four thesis reviews throughout the year. Um, each one of them, you will present some aspect of your work and we invite other critics, um, not only advisors for students who are presenting, but other faculty at school or artists, curators, scholars, um, architects within New York City who hold a conversation with students about their work. And there's something incredibly rich as we've learned um, over the years in that process of presenting a work four times throughout the year and continuing to develop it and refine it, not only because your research progresses, but also because you get to approach the question of the review differently and iteratively throughout the year. You can decide what the best way is to approach a review. Um, do you present it piece by piece? Do you return to a key set of themes that you repeat over and over and again as you try to, to develop new aspects of your thinking, your research? Do you develop different uh, visual modes of presentation? And, and the reason I'm stressing this now is to say that although the program is very research-based, it's uh, Mm, there, it's strongly organized around writing and historical research. We also question what the format is for any given type of uh, research project within the program. Uh, so for a thesis review, you might question what the best way is to present, how to think about what a review structure is, how to think about how your own project fits within the convention of the review structure. and. Uh, in, in that sense, you can think of the review itself as a kind of genre or format that you work with, or you might question, or you might develop a different approach to. And we try to ask that question across all modes of architectural research and presentation. So when we're thinking about exhibitions, we think about what the conventions and the genres of exhibition work are. We think about how they, those have been, been formed historically, theoretically, institutionally, conventionally, and how to think different modes of practice or to how to think a critical understanding of those forms of practice so that if your own thesis is, or your own work within the program is engaged with something like exhibition work, ideally what you have is um, not only an expertise within the particular field of research that you're developing, but you have a strong conceptual orientation toward the format that that research is going to take. Um, and so, you know, maybe maybe I'll just pause there for a second um, to see if you have any questions and to see if Felicity wants to weigh in. But but just to stress that the the I, I guess the key things I want to say is that it's a small, intimate program, but it has an open, flexible structure. And within that program, you will be doing research. Uh, uh, based work primarily um, with a strong writing orientation, but also that questions the types of formats through which we conventionally understand architectural research. Maybe I'll just underscore, you know, two things, especially in the colloquia, you could, in the first year, even you can begin to test formats for the final project. Oh, excuse me. 
for the final project for for those courses. So you might, in fact, rather than a um, uh, a history theory paper, decide to produce a portfolio of criticism or a project for an exhibition or rethink a, an institutional framework. So you can already begin to test out the format question in the core CCCP classes even before the, the thesis allows you to do that. And you know, it might be the case that other seminars allow you to do that too, but um, but that's typically not the the sort of ambition of a of a of a history theory class. Well, maybe I'll also just add to to Mark's um, outline that, that you know students largely take courses from the um, architecture faculty, the history theory faculty, Laura Kerga, Mabel Wilson, Reinhold Martin. There's you know, lots of people that Athea Kodakawala that have been really key to the to the program. But um, students also have taken classes in what's historically been called visual studies um, uh, and also outside of the school, whether it be in anthropology or art history and many of the area studies, um, parts of the university uh, uh, might be anthropology tends to be quite a popular um, place for students to, to, to look for the sorts of classes that will, uh, you know, build a sort of framework of expertise and interest that will uh, you know, help them think towards thesis. Not that the entire coursework is directed towards thesis, but sometimes you might need to learn a new language, for instance. And, and so you can, you know, use part of your coursework in the first year to, to be developing that particular uh, particular skill. But maybe also just to say, um, uh, just to underscore, you know, Mark's formulation of the, of the, of the, of the thesis presentations, and in fact, you know, we can add the colloquia presentations to some degree to that, which is that they are, you know, one of many formats through which you're uh, uh, taking your research into a sort of public domain. So it's almost like we conceive of that as one among many uh, vehicles of publication, of rendering public, like engaging a type of public audience for for your work. And this is why it's so critical to think of that not, let's say, as the main body of the thesis work or even of the research work in a class, but as one genre of its uh, mode of appearance, yeah, the way in which it um, translates into, into a, in this case, a spoken format or performed format. And, and so I think that it is, um, yeah, I think that's a particularly sort of unique aspect of the, of the program. And maybe just one other small thing, part of the reason the coursework is, you know, conceived as a sort of flexible system to accommodate many different people's interests is not only that people are 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 you know, coming through the program to forge a particular career path, um, sort of, you know, remaining within, but also moving beyond conventional modes of architectural practice, uh, but also because people come with very different backgrounds. You know, some people come straight from a professional undergraduate degree. Other people might come from a theater background, or they might've been a filmmaker, uh, or they might have a, a, a undergraduate degree in architectural history or urban history. And, and so there's also like an enormous range of people that come into the program that, that might need, you know, very different types of, training to to get where they want to get with their own work and and so that you know, the flexible um manner i think works yeah it works for, from sort of both ends of of the um of the structure so maybe a couple of other we should maybe talk briefly about um um so in addition to the coursework and the thesis you know a lot of our students um act in assistantship positions whether it was Mark and myself, or sometimes with other um, uh, in the MARC program as a teaching assistant. There's lots of lots of other ways in which students work with um, uh, with exhibitions, with the publications office. So there's also ways to sort of touch down in those you could call them professional interests, or or just building uh, other forms of expertise while while you're a student at the school. A lot of our students also are teaching assistants for the um, undergraduate architecture program, which is housed at Barnard College. It's actually a Barnard Columbia sort of collaboration. Um, and so they are very fond of CCCP students as teaching assistants. Uh, students also um, have often um, uh, pursued internships at the Avery Library in the, in the rare books and special collections, which is a, a sort of training. They often have our students 
um, uh, processing archival collections that are coming in as part of a, it's like a summer internship. So that's again, something that you would be paid for. Students also pursue internships in other parts of the city, uh, in museums and uh, the architect's newspaper. Or, yeah, I mean, so there's also lots of things in New York that that are, that the program is connected to, and that can be a really, I think, important vehicle to test out other aspects of your that are interest in professional development. Um, so. Let's see what else. And I mean, I mentioned Avery Library and Special Collections. I'm sure you all know that it's one of the premier, if not the premier architectural research library, uh, not only in the country, but internationally. So it's an incredible resource also for the program, um, both in coursework and for other for other other parts of the, the program. So back to you, Mark. <laughs> Let's just see if anybody has questions. We, we, we can talk more about other aspects of the program, but let's just see if anybody wants to jump in first. And if you have a question, just unmute and launch right in. I don't, I don't need to see digital hands or anything like that, so. <laughs> no. Um, all right, well, you're thinking about questions. The, when, when we uh, met with students in person, we also spoke about other aspects of the program, like, um, for example, one feature of the program that's been pretty consistent over the years is that our students have proposed group research projects to the school. And this is something that the school has generally been fairly receptive toward. And um, the students have gone to Venice to study, for example, last year, the students went to Venice to study the motif and the trope of the laboratory and how that played out within the Venice Architecture Biennial. And they um, met with curators and participants and developed a reading, a kind of counter catalog to the laboratory um, of, the, of the architecture laboratory of Venice. And, and Students have gone to Venice a few times in the history of the program. They have also participated via similar uh, uh, mechanisms in the Sharjah architecture triennial. They have traveled to South America. Um, and, and so there's, there beyond coursework and beyond colloquia, um, there are different uh, features of the program that allow students to work together and to, and to develop um, not only interesting res group research projects, but also forms of expertise um, in, in that work that they do together. So another example of this is uh, the in interpretations, the conference mm -hmm. or symposia that our students have put on almost every year since the launching of the degree program. And similarly, this is student directed, students generally in their second year, uh, even though Initially, it was students in the first year, but now it's students in the second year conceive of a theme or a problem or a set of questions around which they structure the symposia. symposium. They invite guest speakers. They organize the space for the event. They, <laughs> they coordinate to the meal after, uh, and they do all of the communication. And so it's an incredibly, and, and, and these are, these been in really rich uh, discussions and conversations, but also uh, really useful mechanisms for our students to learn some of the basic skills of how one operates within an academic context. And, and so they're not exactly the type of work that you would do in courses. It's not exactly personal research, but the program has many of these opportunities to perform in a kind of para-academic mode and, um, and, and develop your work in multiple directions alongside your coursework. Just to add to that, you know, Mark and I, of course, meet, you know, with the, the group, whether it's an entire year or cohort, or, you know, sometimes it's like four people in a year that decide to launch a, a symposium or a publication related to uh, the interpretation series. And yep, yeah, so we work with people, um, to, to, I mean, of course, students come with the idea, but we brainstorm and you know, help think through how to navigate the different aspects of what needs to be done, like how to develop a you know, precise way of communicating with different people that need to be approached. 
So these, I think, are also important things. It should also maybe mention that we have another um, um, uh, ritual, for want of a better word, which is that we have the first year students curate the the end of year show, the, like the thesis exhibition for the second year students. And it's a way not only of collaborating with your, your peers in the second year, but, but you know, thinking about how to present the program within the larger framework of the school. And this has also been sort of fantastically productive, collaborative um, occasion to get people working together and thinking together and testing strategies um, of, of exhibition making. Often on short notice, we should add. It's an end of year show. It's <laughs> a longer project. Yeah, yeah. Great to see such a good turnout. Um, yeah. And I'm sorry I missed those of you who came in person the other day, but nice to yeah. get to connect with prospective students. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, despite our many, many years of familiarity with Zoom, it's always an awkward format. So if any of you feel like you have questions that you want to ask that you didn't raise here, email us and uh, we can respond to you by email or if there are questions more about the application structure, you can talk to Stefan or his team in the admissions office. Um, yeah, so feel free to be in touch if other questions come up. Okay. Great. We're perfectly on time. <laughs> Thanks everyone. <laughs>